Hi folks, you might have been disappointed by your Onkyo having it only a year or two, and then it doesn't seem to work with the HDMI inputs from your external devices, like your Blu-ray player. This model and a couple others have a known problem with the HDMI inputs. Uh, you can read that part real slowly and decide if you want to do that. If your audio and video works using these old school inputs, but it does not work using the HDMI inputs, then you have failed components on your HDMI interface card. At least that's the most likely scenario. No guarantees here, folks. We're going to have to remove the card and replace the components. First thing to do is open it up. Two screws on the back here. And two screws on each side. Pull back and lift slightly at the rear, and the cover should pop right off. This is a good time to go in with some canned air or an air compressor and blow off excess dust, which can uh, increase the heat that uh, you experience on the components. This is a hot chassis. To remove the HDMI board, we have to remove these five screws at the HDMI sockets. These five screws are a different type of screw than the first six that you removed. The heads are a little more square and they have, these have a finer thread on them. These are all the screws you have to deal with, so don't worry about uh, getting them mixed up too much. Pinch the little flanges there so we can get the board off from the standoff. Now we have to disconnect the cables. There's two. The first is this ribbon cable, which just pulls out. Try to get it straight and slow so you don't bend them. Now I cut the tie wrap to separate this wire, but it actually wasn't necessary. Now we're going to remove the second cable, push down on the top of that connector with a broad screwdriver, and pull up on the wire, and it just releases its grip. Now we have three connectors holding this to the motherboard, so it's just a matter of pulling it out, and it can be a little tough. We have one capacitor on the top side that we're going to replace and four capacitors on the bottom side. Here's the five that I ordered from DigiKey. Uh, I recommend you uh, splurge and spend the extra 25 cents or so and get an extra one in case you lose or damage one. These are capacitors. They are polarized. They go in only one way, like a battery. You can put them in either the wrong way, so make sure you get that little black stripe in the correct direction. You'll see later. There's indications on the board. These are surface mount style, so they have very short leads and this little plastic spacer. You have the option to order standard radial lead type capacitors. And so the wires coming off will probably be round instead of flat and longer. So you can bend them and trim them to make it a little easier to mount on the board. We're not going to use the spacers. They just get in the way here. Now notice that black mark on the left. And it corresponds to the flat side of that little white outline. Now to remove it, we're just going to gently twist it back and forth. Try not to try not to rock it or pull it away from the board because you can possibly damage the traces on the board and then you're going to be in a tough spot. So just uh, gradually rock it a little bit more back and forth and eventually the leads will pop off. By the way, you can use a higher voltage rated capacitor if you want, but it will be larger. So you make sure you have room for it to fit. And there we go. Capacitor's off. 
and we just throw away the spacer we don't have any use for it now here's one where the lead broke off and still is uh, attached to the board so you can just grab that lead and twist it or in my case I'm using a soldering iron and removing it Okay, I'm using a piece of blue tack to hold the capacitor in place. It's quick, it's easy, it's steady, and I don't have to have anybody else around to help me, being the loner that I am. Okay, the soldering iron's preheated. I'm not teaching you how to solder in this video. That's way beyond the scope of this. Once again, make sure the capacitor is installed the correct way. The black side aligned to the flat side of the outline on the circuit board to the left here in this case. Now just rinse and repeat for the other capacitors, put it all back together the way you took it apart and hopefully it will work. Hey thanks to the folks at AVS Forums, uh, a lot of good information and Baraka Bashad.